Hello everyone. I hope and pray that you're doing well. It was Valentine's Day earlier this week and uh, I'm not really that big on Valentine's Day as a hallmark holiday. Um, and before, the, before you worry that I'm some sort of romantic Scrooge um, who just wants an excuse not to mark Valentine's Day, I will say, I'll defend myself and say that uh, I did mark Valentine's Day with Ella, uh, but I'm also a pretty private person and so is Ella, so enough about that. Uh, but one reason I guess I'm a little bit hesitant on overplaying Valentine's Day is that it can overemphasize romantic love. I'm, I'm in front of the, the church mailboxes here, um, representing all sorts of folks in our church family. Some of us are parts of couples, some of us are singles, some of us are widowed or separated or divorced, uh, some of us are single parents. Uh, some of us wish we were married and some of us uh, have chosen to be single. Now I think, you know, I think uh, couples and families, I, I think they're great, don't get me wrong, some of my best friends are married. Um, but I know from conversations with single persons um, in our own church that sometimes churches can feel like lonely places. That, uh, that we sometimes fail to include single persons, uh, that we sometimes exclude uh, instead of include. And certainly I need to hear from and be shaped by listening to single persons among us. I think the Bible gives some clarity. It, it challenges this idea that marriage and couplehood are somehow better than singleness. Here, here's the message translation of Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 7. Paul writes, Sometimes I wish everyone were single like me, a simpler life in many ways. But celibacy is not for everyone, any more than marriage is. God gives the gift of the single life to some, the gift of the married life to others. Philip Yancey wrote this book called Rumors of Another World. And in it, he points towards C.S. Lewis, uh, who sensed that um, in our longings, who sensed in our longings, not just rumors, but also kind of these advanced echoes uh, of another world. And, and this is the quote from Lewis. Flashes of beauty and pangs of aching sweetness are not the thing itself. They, only are, they are only the scent of a flower we have not yet found the echo of a tune we have not yet heard, news from a country we have never visited. And so love, romantic love, the love of a friend, the love of a parent, love can give us this whiff, this, this scent of what we really long for and need. Human love can do that, right? And what we really long for and need, of course, is the love of God. Augustine famously wrote, to, you know, speaking to God, you have made us for yourselves, for, for, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. I, I read this week um, this little quote, love means nothing in tennis, but it's everything in life. And so I certainly hope and pray that each of us, uh, regardless of what our you know family, single, married, couple, whatever our life situation looks like, I hope we experience human love. And I hope that in that love, we experience God's love. Because nobody belongs solely to their lover, and nobody belongs exclusively to their family of origin. Um, we finally belong to God. And, and that's a great comfort, as the Heidelberg Catechism puts it, uh, that our only comfort, our ultimate comfort, in life and in death, is that we belong, is that we are loved, that we, we belong body and soul, in life and in death, to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. May you experience love. 
from neighbor, from family, from partner, and especially from God. The peace of Christ be with you all.